Okay, part three of the summer in Bosnia, Yugoslav Spomenikant. We've left Sarajevo, and this begins a three to four day non-stop whirlwind drive about the Federation entity of Bosnia before returning back to Republika Srpska entity. We're going to drive through Visoko, Zenica, Travnik, Yaitza, Bihats, and others. You'll see. So we stopped in Visoko for this mosque, built in the 1980s. It's Sherifuddin's White Mosque. The original mosque was built in 1477, but uh, now you got this by architect Zlatko Ugdien. Uglien was influenced by Le Corbusier and traditional Ottoman forms. Unfortunately, it's locked. In the tourist circuit, this town, Visoko, is known for the Bosnian pyramids. Um, it's a grouping of natural hills that are kind of uh, pyramid shaped. And uh, some marketer came up with the idea in 2005. Uh, EU has condemned it as a, as a cruel hoax. They're not real pyramids. We've arrived at Zenica and we're driving to our first Spomenik. And now for what Bianca likes best, a hike. A three kilometer round trip hike. We're going up Smetovi Hill and back down. And at the top of the hill is the Spomenik. While I endure this grueling hike, I'll tell you the story behind the Spomenik. When the kingdom of Yugoslavia was invaded and occupied by Axis forces, the area of present day Bosnia was integrated into the Axis run puppet state of the independent state of Croatia, which was administered by the Croatian nationalist militia called Ustashe. This town Zenica fell under Ustasha rule and its population was brutally oppressed. Long story short, in May 1942, the Chetniks turned against their partisan partners and massacred 32 of their own partisan fighters on this hill. Smetovi Hill, goddamn this hill. Henceforth, the Chetniks no longer fought on the side of the partisans and instead collaborated with the Ustashe regime. And the Spomenik is the monument to the fallen partisan detachment of Zenica. It was erected in 1968 on Smetovi Hill by Arfan Hozic. It's 13 meters tall. This obelisk commemorates the fighters who perished during the struggles with Axis forces and Chetnik fighters in May. 1942. You know, vandals toppled this monument in 2003, but fortunately for you and me, Zenica officials rebuilt it. On the same hilltop as the World War II Spomenik is this uh, Bosnian War Monument. Now we'll head down the hill and walk around Zenica a little bit. So we're downtown in Zenica. We'll look at a few Yugoslav era buildings and push on. So here's our first building. It's uh, Hotel Dubrovnik, opened in 1962 under a different name, and it was designed by a student of Le Corbusier. Panning to the right, we have the Lamella building. It's completed in 1976, just like me. 27 floors, 101 meters high, 232 apartments. Its nickname is Zanichki Empire, a play on the Empire State Building. This brutalist style ascending staircase, six tower block was the tallest building in Yugoslavia when it was completed and remained so until uh, 1980 when the Gen X Tower in Belgrade was completed. Did I say tallest building? I meant tallest residential tower block. 
in the background there is Hotel International. It was completed in 1978, designed by the same Bosnian architect who gave us the Lamella building. It's been abandoned since around the Bosnian War. This is Zenica's Bosnian National Theater. It was opened in 1978. Uh, a modernist creation by Sarajevo architect Zlatko Ugljen. You know the name, the same designer for the first mosque you saw today in Visoko. And he also did the Spomenik in Bogoscha, last video, Sarajevo video, with uh, Petar Krstic. So when this theater was completed in 1978, it was the largest theater in Yugoslavia. And this massive metal sculpture this was designed by one of Yugoslav era's most famous sculptors, Dusan Jamonja. Don't know if I said that right. The hanging sculpture is titled Curtain. And that's a wrap for Zenica. I think the clock tower is a gift from Turkey and some other things in this park. I think the, I think the park's called Turkish Park. And now a 25 minute drive to an Ustasha concentration camp. <laughs> Here we are at the Kruščica concentration camp for Jews and Serbs operated by the fascist Croatian Ustasha. A group that is said to have been so cruel it disgusted the Nazis. Food parcels were burned before the eyes of inmates here who were forced to eat grass and pumpkin leaves. Rape was common. They say around 5,000 civilians passed through this camp, 3,000 of which were killed, either here or at camps prisoners were transferred to, such as Yasinovats. In addition to being killed at the camp, Many were also taken to um, the Smrike mass grave site and executed. Um, I think we're going to visit there next. After World War II, one of the buildings was restored and converted into a museum. The one you see here, it's, it's obviously been destroyed since. It's become known as the Black House. Tsurna Kucha. Uh, and, and here's a monument. A monument by Fadil Bilic. This place basically has been in ruins since the Bosnian War. There's bats inside here. Now a 20 minute drive to Novi Travnik, a site of a massacre and, um, and a Spomenik by one of my favorite Yugoslav sculptors, architects, artists, Bodan Bodanovic. Monument on Smrike by Bodan Bodanovic is a necropolis for the victims of fascism. It was completed in 1975. You got 12 monoliths here, three to four meters tall, and they commemorate the roughly 700 civilians who died at this site in a brutal massacre committed by occupying Ustasha forces August 1941. Some background. On August 1st, 1941, Ustasha leadership in Travnik authorized the mass arrest and elimination of any suspected communist sympathizers or collaborators with the exciting 
direction that no evidence was necessary if the suspect was a Serb or a Jew. Anyway, here on this hill is where the suspects were killed. Allegedly, the Ustasha would scream at ethnic Serb prisoners, this is what you get for betraying Austria. Yeah. It was a common line of thinking of the Axis forces during World War II that the Serbs were personally responsible for World War I, since Gavrilo Princip, an ethnic Serb, had assassinated the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, 1914. Numerous additional Ustasha executions took place at this mass gravesite. Uh, prisoners from the Khrushchitsa concentration camp that we just saw, they were killed here as well. As you can see, this Spomanik is right in the middle of a cornfield. It's Romanian fruit thieving season. Similar to the way the Turks do it. You know, if you can see it, then it's yours. The right of the eyes. What do you got here, Baloga? Kurgadusha. What's kurgadusha? No idea. Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. You're eating them? Yeah. They look like cherries. They're not cherries. Eh? Driving now to Travnik, where we're going to stay for the night. Travnik is a town that has a nickname, European Istanbul. This is because for about 150 years, Travnik was the headquarters of the viziers. A vizier was the sultans, the Ottoman sultans, representative in Bosnia. First stop in Travnik, a World War II Memorial Ossuary. It's the Mother Memorial Ossuary from 1961. The crypt portion of the memorial contains the remains of 94 fallen partisan fighters who participated in the liberation of Travnik. There's, a, there's an inscription here, and it translates into English as, uh, in this memorial place we remember, with due respect, the partisan fighters who won the people's liberation struggle in the fight against fascism from 1941 to 1945, giving their lives for the freedom of the Travnik region. Death to fascism, freedom to the people. An Ottoman clock tower. There are two clock towers in this town. This is an Ottoman tomb of one of those viziers I was telling you about. Two schools in one roof. There are about 50 plus schools operating like this in the Federation entity of Bosnia, where Bosniak children and Croat children are segregated. On the right, shiny and new blue, well kept up section of this school for the Catholic Croat children. And on the left is a dilapidated yellow part for the Muslims. The reason for the difference, the country of Croatia donated money to this building, but only to be used to benefit the Croatian children. Until 2019, the courtyard here was split in two by a fence. Keep the Muslims and the Catholics separated. This is a painted Ottoman mosque, Soleimania, 1815. Some would say it's one of the most beautiful mosques in Bosnia. There's the other clock tower that makes two.
Dubrovnik is known for its javapi, and I hope I'm about to find out why. Here's your hermashitsa. It was good javapi. I would go back and I would have more javapi. I got too much javapi. I got 10 pieces of javapi, half a pound, 250, 250 grams of javapi. Too much for me, but uh, I ate it all and uh, now I'm gonna walk it off. I wanted to walk up to the fortress. There's stairs that go right up to the fortress here. It's one of the must-do's and uh, I, have been, I have been vetoed. It's not good, we can still go up. Oh? We can go up. You wanna go up? No, but we can. Rare is the day to find a post-1990s Tito statue. We've just done it. Plava Voda. Plava Voda. Blue water. I don't know anything about it, but it's a must-see. And since we can't do the fortress, because We'll, no, go see the, actually, we'll go see the cold water. Actually, I wanted to go. Cut! And, and There's the fortress of Travnik. This is Plava Voda, and from the freezing air blowing at me right now, I guess the water is freezing cold. Second time I've seen this refrigerator solution in Bosnia. Good morning. Travnik for breakfast, and then it's a long hour drive to our next stop for the day, Yaitze. Let the record show that Ed said it's, he's too tired for the fortress, so that's why we're not going up. For breakfast, I ordered a Bagova Chorba. Bay's soup. It's chicken and okra. It's a Bosnian thing. So that fortress we're not going to go up to was used by and expanded by the Ottomans from 1463 through 1878. Stopped in Torbe for this Spomenik complex, brought to you by the same team, Zlatko Ugin and Petar Krstic, that brought you the uh, Vratinac Spomenik, the first one we saw when we entered Bosnia. The Spomenik in Bogosha. Zenica's Bosnia National Theater, you know. So this is Torbe Memorial Park and Tomb, 1974. Stopped for some lavender honey. Nearly arrived to Yaitze. This is a partisan memorial cemetery in the town of Donyvakov. Elements have been installed here from 1958 till 1975. Yeah. <laughs> and 
And there's a newer Spomenik here. It is uh, for the Bosnian War. A lot of people who died in 1992, 1993. And now, no stop till Yaitze. 30 minutes. We've reached Yaitze. The Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was born here. You'll see later. Right now we're walking down a, a trail off the road, um, a view of a waterfall. When you're in town, there's a waterfall right in the middle of town, but they make you pay to see it. There's a better view from here. We'll cross the bridge and uh, get over to the old town now. Look, it's the museum to the second session of the Anti-Fascist Council for the People's Liberation of Yugoslavia. This is the building where Tito gave a speech shortly after his escape in the Battle of Suchevska, where the people decided he would lead Yugoslavia when the war ended, when World War II ended and that uh, to hell with the Kato Georgievichs. They're gone, the royal family's gone. So it's kind of the birth of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. Take a quick look inside. So this room is uh, set up pretty much as it was when Tito gave his speech, when everyone said, Tito, you're the man now. And look at this here, uh, translated into English, long live our allies the USSR, England, and America. Along the top edges of the auditorium are large ink drawings of Churchill, Tito, Marx, Stalin, and Roosevelt. And this says, long live the Red Army. And over here by Marx, long live Stalin. In the back by the balcony, long live our heroic People's Liberation Army. Look at our kitchen. It's a grill. What are you doing? Are you making butter? Nice view from our front yard means a miserable walk down into town and an even more miserable walk back up. Yaitse did not escape the Bosnian War. Bullet holes. An unusual design for the Yugoslav era. It's the old Yaitse shopping center. We put it up in 1976. It was called Yaitse. It's called something else now. House of Culture. Yugoslav font in the bank building. Yaitse was built in the 1300s and served as the capital of the independent kingdom of Bosnia. The last king of Bosnia lived here. He got his crown here from Pope Pius II. And he was killed here by the Ottomans. Reminger, a Bosnian beer I haven't tried yet. How do you say it? Bosanski Lonats. Bosanski Lonats. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 
So this is uh, traditional as well, Bosnian. It's uh, beef, carrots, and potato. Another Spomenik. Monument to the fighters and liberators of Yaitze. 1972 by a sculptor from Dubrovnik. A church existed here by at least the 1100s, St. Mary's. The very last Bosnian king was crowned here in 1461. And when the Ottomans took over in the 1500s, they converted it into a mosque. 1832, it burned down and it stayed down. But this tower, St. Luke's Tower, it has stood tall the entire time. This is called the Bear Tower. The entrance to some catacombs. I think they're calling this one the Clock Tower. I don't, I, I don't agree. Yeah. No. Oh, it's special. I must say, <laughs> so that's the that's the fortress right behind me. Cost five marks to get in. You've been to a ton of fortresses. I've been to a ton of fortresses. We don't need to we don't need to lose five marks. Times two, ten marks. This is the women's mosque constructed from 1812 without a minaret. You don't find too many of those in Bosnia. Old school quality there. It's been about two hours since I ate. Starving. Thinking about Chavapi. Bosnian War Monument. That's it for today. Good morning. So we got one more stop in Yaitse, and then it's off to Bihać. Bihać. Yeah. Bihać. Say it. Bihać. We're going there. It's about four hours with all the stops I have planned. These little water mills date back to 1867, Austro-Hungarian times. What's the name of the lake? Uh, As we were leaving Sarajevo, I know I told you this was going to be a road trip through the Federation entity of Bosnia. We just, oh, we just crossed into Republika Srpska. It's just going to be for a few minutes. <laughs>
And that's it for the entity of Republika Srpska. We've just left the autonomous entity and we have returned to the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Just past the Spomenik on the side of the road and uh, we're in a village called Bravsko. Let's see. Let's see what this one's all about. Spomenik database. Okay, here it is, page 26. Bravsko, um, this is the monument to the fallen fighters of the National Liberation War. Surprise, surprise. Completed 1972, seven meters high, poured concrete and rebar. This Spomenik honoring the Bravsko company fighters killed in the war was designed by Yugoslav architect Mirko Radulovic. It also commemorates partisans uh, Trivo, Latinovic, Mile, Latinovic, who were made Yugoslav national heroes. It goes on. By the book. By the book. <laughs> Heading another 20 minutes down the road to Medeno Polje. Polje, in the dictionary, is defined as field, but I think a better definition would be plain. They don't make this Spomenik easy to get to. There are stairs. They're just so masked by the grass. Nature has reclaimed. So we're in Medeno Polje, and this is the monument to the Partizan Air Squadron. It commemorates the local fallen fighters of the National Liberation War, World War II, as well as the inception of the Partizan Air Force. It was completed in 1982. And here they don't know who the designer is. It's eight meters high, poured concrete and rebar. From this vantage point into the sun, you can see that expansive plain, Polje. We're in the village of Vodzenica, and it seems kind of derelict. Well, look at this house. And this village has a Spomenik, and it's in the book. The Spomenik is as derelict as the town. So the town's name is Vodzenica, and this is the monument to the Vodzenica company. Year completed, unknown, designer, unknown. It's six meters high, poured concrete, and rebar. And uh, let's see if I have any bit of history here for you. Uh, it's a lot, you should read the book. Um, it says it's severely damaged and neglected, deteriorating. Oh, the village itself is derelict and abandoned uh, since the Bosnian War. And basically it looks like a, a bunch of people from this village rose up against Ustasha and this monument is dedicated to them, this village and perhaps uh, surrounding areas. Now to take a break from Spomenix. Sorry, I know, I know. And uh, it's about a half an hour drive to the entrance to Una National Park. A national park named after the river that flows through it that divides Bosnia and Croatia. What a color. The Green Una River, and right across the river is Croatia. We're going to take a quick look at Štorbački Waterfall in Una National Park. And I want you to note all of the Arabs you're going to see, because what I noticed about Bosnia is any time there's a waterfall, or even water for that, for that matter, ton of Arabs. I feel like they come here just for water. They might not have a lot of water back, back home where they're coming from. That building on the other side, that's Croatia.
Storbatsky waterfall, the one you just saw, is the highest waterfall on the Una River. It's 24 meters high. Don't take this road, they all said. It's too dangerous, it's not in a good condition, but I figured if we take this road, there'd be no tourists, and maybe we increase the possibility of us seeing the famous bears of Una National Park. And wolves. And wolves, and lizards, and snakes. Big cats, I don't know, everything. Oh. So we're gonna do this light off-roading for about 14 kilometers until we hit a paved road and then head, well, we're still heading to Bihaj, just, just a, a slower way. Well, that was an hour of rewardless bear hunting. Sorry to waste your time. You. So this is an island, and I guess there are five wooden bridges connecting it somehow. Oh, this map. Maybe this map explains everything. Uh, maybe five bridges, because there's five or, looks like five or six islands. All right. Let's see. I don't know if you noticed, uh, the river, the water is green, and this is, again, the Una River. No peeing and cutting balls? seven hours on the road so far today. Winding down, heading to a, a socialist, modernist building that houses a, a restaurant, Restaurant Sunse. But it's rated four out of five. I don't think we'll eat there, but let's take a look at the building. It's about 10 minutes away. Just your friendly reminder not to take random hikes in the beautiful woods of Bosnia. Here it is, Restaurant Sunse. Creative Yugoslav architecture, modernist building from the early 70s. We're in Bihać, finally, we made it. We're gonna see one more Spomenik, check into the hotel, eat some dinner, and then I got shit to do. I saved the best for last again, just like yesterday. It's another Bodan Bodanovich, 1981. The Gadovica Memorial Park, the victims of fascist terror. In 1941, Bihać became part of the newly independent state of Croatia, run by Ustasha. And uh, right away, the mayor of Bihać, Ustasha aligned, ordered that all ethnic Serbs and Jews leave the city immediately. A lot of them stayed, then he ordered that they be arrested. Serbs and Jews were arrested. Many were taken up here by the thousands and executed. Throughout the course of the war, some uh, 15,000 citizens of this city of Bihać were killed by Ustasha. The monoliths here range from four to six meters in height. There are 15 monoliths. We checked into Bihać. Bihać. Love this town name. Just so you know, it's 34 degrees Celsius. It's like 90, 93, 94 degrees Fahrenheit. All day, that's what we've been dealing with. Tonight for dinner, I figured I'd switch it up a little bit. 
and have some chavapi. One last Spomanik, monument to the liberation of Bihaj. By an artist from Zagreb, this Spomanik honors the Yugoslav partisan fighters who perished during the liberation of Bihaj at the very end of World War II in 1945. Largely, they were Slovene partisan fighters who liberated Bihaj. Captain's Tower, a sarcophagus, for a duke, perhaps, from the 1300s? This is the parish church of St. Anthony of Padua. It's uh, an 1800s building, but the tower was damaged during the Bosnian War. Originally built as a church, St. Anthony of Padua Church in 1266, Gothic style. Ottomans took over, now it's a mosque, Fethiye Mosque. Yeah, it was in 1592 that the Ottoman army conquered Bihać and converted the church into uh, Fethiye Mosque. The Gothic bell tower of the former church was used as a minaret until 1863, but it was in poor condition by that time, and it was replaced by the present-day minaret you see here. Local beer from Bihaj. Finn? 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 Good morning from Biatch. Today we're gonna to end our drive about the Federation entity of Bosnia when we cross into the Republic of Srpska entity. But uh, we're gonna take another little stroll about the city here in Biatch. Visit a, a Middle Eastern migrant area of the city and uh, catch a few more Spomaniks on our way out of this entity. Let's return to the Lady of the Una River. I didn't say anything about her yesterday. So this statue from 1986 was once the central element in the monument to the liberation of Bihać, that wall memorial I showed you yesterday. It was sculpted by the same artist from Zagreb. But as you can see, it has since been relocated to the riverside. Honor thy Borek. Gorgeous. Here's the wall memorial again to the liberation of Bihać. I know you saw it yesterday, but I was running out of space on my phone, so I didn't really tell you much. So the same artist that sculpted the lady uh, put this up in 1960. It also marked uh, an anniversary from 1260. What does that mean? 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 700 year anniversary for something I'm gonna put in the captions. And look, there's, there's Tito in the center here. That looks like Tito, right? And uh, here's a look at the left panel here. Uh, they, look, they look like Ottomans over there. This must be the, uh, the 1260 part of the memorial. Uh, look at this. So this is a building constructed as the Workers University in 1959, international style of architecture. But what's exciting is this, this giant mosaic here. 
And that is clearly a silhouette of Tito. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. In 1999, it was reorganized as a cultural center. It sort of functions as still today. This uh, modern Spomanik is in front of the culture center. Today, July 11th, is the 28th anniversary of the massacre at Srebrenica, which was uh, July 11th, 1995. Bihać was under siege for three years during the Bosnian War, so a lot of bullet holes all over the city. It's a refreshing 36 degrees Celsius outside today. We're driving to the uh, Middle Eastern migrant camp right now. There's a Spomanik nearby. So this is the, uh, the building that houses over 600 Middle Eastern migrants. And right in front of the building is this monument, this memorial to Bihać Partisan Battalions, 1968. It commemorates um, the 868 fighters of Bihać that lost their lives in the national liberation struggle. And here are the, the stone markers, overgrown. And that's it for Bihać. Heading now to a castle that got an early start as a fort in the 400s BC. I think it was 405 BC, early Iron Age. Ostrojats Castle. The version you see here was constructed from the 1200s. It was the home of a duke and a captain, it had some Ottoman times. 1899, it was sold to a knight, a Catholic from England. The mayor of Bihać lived here. No, Tito stayed here a few months from, I think, 1942, 1943. In 1946, Tito nationalized this castle. It became the supreme headquarters for the army of Yugoslavia. You want to see the, uh, the old castle toilets? Four in a row, four squatty potties, four a la turcas lined up. Let's see the sort of view the castle residents enjoyed. They could see the Una River from out on the balcony here. Since 1967, this castle has hosted an annual event, the Colony of Sculptors, Ostrojats. So there's about 150 sculptures on permanent display here in the castle courtyard. Heading up a dirt road for 20 minutes, one more Spomanik in the entity that is Bosnia and Herzegovina Federation. And then that'll be the end of this video. We'll move on to Republika Srpska. That was fun. So this is the village of 
Garmusha, and this is a monument to fallen fighters, 1975, by Dragan Mirkovic. And that's all I got for you. I think there's an abandoned church back there. Now for a quick look at this church before we attempt to escape this village. There's something big in the bushes behind me. I feel like it ran away. You know, push the trees aside. Something huge. Maybe a bear? And to demonstrate to you how perhaps idiotic it is to go off-roading around, uh, you know, fields in abandoned villages, here's another, uh, here's another minefield. And this is farewell till next video. Hope you enjoyed the drive about the Federation. See you next time in Republika Srpska.